Are you ready to turn a space hab into a space home? Starfield is a massive open-world single-player RPG that gives those with an itch for adventure a chance to take to the galaxy to explore what all of the vast expanse of space has to offer. But with so many planets, resources, and life forms to discover, it can sometimes be a nice change of pace to just kick back, relax, and let some good old machinery do the work. In this guide, we will discuss what the outposts in Starfield can do for you, as well as how to turn a desolate and lonely planet into a well-oiled, resource-abundant machine. First and foremost, what exactly is an outpost? Outposts are bases that can be built on each and every planet you come across on your adventures through the galaxy, where players can create a thriving economy that streamlines different resources that they may need for research. If you're familiar with the settlements from Fallout 4 or Fallout 76, then you'll know what you're in for with outposts in Starfield. One of the coolest things about these outposts is that they don't have to be crazy or intricate in order to be functional. Players can also just use them as a base of operations to kick back in a cozy hab filled with stolen goods and decor. With over 1,000 planets to survey in-game, taking a load off once in a while can be pretty nice. You can have up to eight total outposts on any given planet to start out. But how exactly do you build an outpost? Players will need to select a planet they would like to inhabit by using the star map. Once you have chosen your planet, travel to it and make sure that you have the planet itself selected. You will see the option to scan the planet, which will show you all of the resources available on that planet that you have selected. Once the planet has been scanned, you can see every resource by color by choosing the Show Resources option on the UI. This heat map version of the scanned planet can give you an idea of where each listed resource is in abundance. From there, you can determine the best place with the most resources to begin building your new base of operations. Starting up the outpost itself couldn't be easier, as players will simply need to land on the planet they wish to inhabit and set up an outpost beacon. Once you're on the surface of the planet that you would like to build your base on, you'll need to pull your scanner out. Once you have your scanner handy, you will see a button along the bottom of the screen that says Outpost. Select the corresponding button, which is R if you're on mouse and keyboard, or X on controller, and choose a nice clear area to place down the outpost beacon. Once the beacon is placed, it'll create a large perimeter in which you can build in, and you can start constructing several different habs, machines, storage rooms, and more with any and all resources that you have collected. Which brings us to our next point. You are going to need a plethora of resources if you plan on building a large-scale outpost. A lot of these resources are quite common, while others are more rare and difficult to find. In order to tell the common from the rare, you can take a look at the quality rating located in the top right corner of the name of the resource while you are looking at the overhead scan view of the planet. No stars means it is common and can be found quite easily in large numbers. One blue star means it is of rare quality. Two purple stars means it's of epic quality and may be a bit more difficult to find. And finally, three gold stars are of legendary quality and will be much more difficult to find on that planet. You can also upgrade your planet scanning skill for use on the planet's surface in the skill tree to see the locations of uncommon, rare, or exotic materials you can collect yourself from the scan menu. This helps make gathering resources you need for building a bit easier. For those who aren't worried about spending a few extra credits, you can also head over to one of the shops in New Atlantis called the Jemison Mercantile. Here, the vendor can supply you with almost any material you might need in-game. Oh, please, take a look. While this can be quite costly if you try to buy too many materials at once, buying a few to get you started shouldn't break the bank too badly. Every piece of equipment, decoration, furniture, defense system, and structure will take several different resources to build. For example, the small hab takes eight aluminum, six lead, and four sealant. You will need to have these materials either in your inventory or within any storage you have come across in order to build the small hex hab. If you are unsure about what a hab even is, like we were at first, let's quickly break it down. A hab is like a little house players can build within their outpost as a base of operations and a safe space to relax without a spacesuit on. 
You will need at least one outpost airlock attached to your HAB in order to ensure there is oxygen within the HAB that is untouched by the rest of the planet's atmosphere. There are several different HABs to choose from. A four-wall HAB, Hydroponic HAB A, Science HAB Small, Military HAB, HAB Round, and as we previously mentioned, the Small Hex HAB. So what exactly can you do with an outpost other than build bases of operations or homes teeming with stolen art? Each outpost can hold cargo, have crew members, and produce helpful resources for players to use. All of the different resource extractors will need power in order to function, which can be a bit tricky to figure out on your first go-round. Depending on what planet you're on, you might need to pick a different type of power to utilize. For example, some planets are quite a ways away from sunlight, meaning solar power might not work here. Solar power is best used on bright and sunny planets, while wind turbines are better and generate more power on planets that have thicker atmospheres. There is also a fuel generator for players to use that takes HE3 or Helium-3 as fuel and generates a bit of power on any planet with any atmosphere. Deciding which type of power fits the area best will save you both time and resources in the long run. You also don't need to use the power wires unless you specifically want things to be powered or not depending on your needs. For example, you don't have to waste power sources powering two things when you only need one active. You can simply just connect one wire to the machine you need to run. There is also an option to build a crew station, which allows you to place crewmates or recruits on the outpost in order to perform tasks for you. Other than building structures, adding crewmates, and creating extractors for raw materials, players may also build crafting workbenches and labs, as well as storage facilities to house some of their goods and resources in a safe place. Which brings us to our next tidbit of vital information. Not all planets are safe and cozy like New Atlantis. Some planets are home to pirates and crazy wildlife that may attempt to pillage and destroy your newfound home. While pirates don't appear to be able to actually steal any of your goods, it does seem like bullets or wildlife attacking nearby can damage your outpost structures. With that said, if these outposts are anything like the ones from Fallout, pirates or enemies may attack randomly as you progress, so building up defenses is never a bad idea to stay safe and prepared for the worst. Giving your newfound outpost a bit of a personal touch isn't necessary, but it is a pretty neat feature. If you would like to rename your outpost, all you have to do is walk over to your placed outpost beacon and interact with it on its side panel. If you hover over that side panel, a text prompt with two different interaction buttons will pop up. One will allow you to rename the outpost to whatever you so choose. The other option allows you to enter the build mode right from the beacon rather than needing to use your scanner. That's gonna do it for this beginner's guide to Starfield Outposts. For more guides and helpful information, Head on over to the Growing Starfield Wiki, and as always, for all things gaming, stick with IGN.